Well, it gives me uh, just uh, honor and great privilege to introduce Sue Williams to you today, this morning. Sue is a good, good friend, family. We love Sue so much. She uh, worked with us in our house of prayer for a few years. Uh, just has been such a blessing to so many around the world. Uh, based in Herrenhut, Germany, helping lead the house of prayer as a discipleship school. They're an internship and just doing an amazing job. Um, so Sue, we're looking forward to hearing from you and what God's put on your heart today. So glad you could teach us and be with us. The time is yours. Thank you so much, Jason. Uh, yeah, it's such a privilege to be with you all and uh, such a great time just praying and lifting up the Lord's name and just declaring his worth. That is the most important thing that we keep our eyes focused on Jesus and remember who he is and continue to grow in his goodness and grow in the truth of who he is. And while, I, while I, you were all praying, I was just thinking again, just how precious the word of God is. And we can say many things and focus on many things, but his word and his face and his glory is, is the, the, one, the one thing that my heart is after, that we would be like David, just gazing upon the beauty of the Lord day and night, just longing for that above all things, um, that we would be people of one thing, knowing his worth. So that's part of my heart. There's a, a few things I wanted to share with you today. I don't know if I would call it so much as a teaching, as a sharing, and um, yeah, just getting us to think about a few, a few different, uh, different things to remind ourselves of, uh, of the Lord's heart. But I'll start with just explaining a little more who I am and where I'm from. As Jason said, I'm based in Hernhut in Germany, but you can probably tell that I'm not German. <laughs> um, by my name and by my accent, I am from the UK. Um, and I've been, but I've been living here in Hernhut for 13 years um, and uh, part of the House of Prayer here. Uh, spent one year and a number of additional months in, in Bellingham in the Light of the World Prayer Center there. Um, and that's part of how the connection came with Jason. Um, and in the last few years, I've been part of the leadership team here. We're actually a very small ministry. Hanhut is a tiny place. Um, Hanhut and the surrounding villages all together are 4,000 people. So it's not, it's not very many. And we have this building in the center of town um, and we're growing, we're pioneering a house of prayer here. Um, but it is a grassroots German ministry with a few people like me who have joined in <laughs> to, to support the vision. But it's very much a German, German church. It's a German house of prayer and a guest house. Um, but we welcome the nations and uh, many people come to us because they are inspired by the Moravian history. If I'm going too fast for the translation, let me know. I can slow down. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, as I said, we are a, we're a church family here. We're also a house of prayer and, and a guest house. And um, we have four points to our vision. Um, first and foremost, we want to be an altar of worship. We want to be a dwelling place for the Lord. That is the core of what we're doing here. Uh, we want this to be a place where he is pleased to dwell, uh, that he loves to, to, to come and dwell with his people here. And that our first point of ministry is to, to his heart, uh, to honor him and to love him well. And, uh, I wouldn't say we do that very well, but we're growing in it. <laughs> we want to learn to do that better. Um, we're by no means a professional ministry. Uh, we're just simply here with bringing our five loaves and two fishes and learning to love the Lord together. Um, we're all so first point is that we're altar of worship. Second is that we want to be a well of encounter. By that, I mean that people can come and draw from a well <laughs> of the goodness of God. And we see that as being a place of transformation, healing, 
transformation of the heart, uh, encountering the Lord in different ways. That's what we want. When people come in the house, we want them to encounter Jesus, uh, not encounter us so much, um, but encounter him and be transformed by him. Um, thirdly, we want to be a gathering place uh, for the region and for the nations. Uh, a lot of the church focuses on, on go, which is absolutely right. We want to go, but there's also a part that is gather. And for us, that's a key part. We want to draw uh, the body of Christ together to come corporately uh, to honor his name. We see great power in the corporate expression of praise and worship, the corporate expression of, of prayer and intercession. Um, so yeah, we're a gathering place. And then finally, also, we want to be a training uh, place, an equipping center. And we have different uh, expressions of that. So uh, internship and discipleship school, again, very small. When people think about internship and discipleship school, they often think big, but we're very small. It's usually like three or four people at a time coming and joining us. And um, they're joining to serve in the house. So making beds and cleaning toilets. <laughs> and uh, they're also um, joining to, to uh, take prayer and worship hours and also joining the community life. For us, the community side is very important. We don't want to just be a building that people come into. We want to be a worshiping community that people join. Um, and so we're learning to do that. Community is beautiful. But community is also very hard <laughs> and uh, that's the place where we really rub up and and get sharpened so um it's a blessing to be here it's not always easy um but i'm just thankful to the lord for this opportunity to serve in in germany uh in the center of europe and we uh, part of our heart um is also to really connect with the nations around us so we have a lot of people from Poland and the Czech Republic that uh, join us here. And um, that's a key part of our ministry. Um, and also uh, central to our vision is very much to, to bless Israel. We know God's heart for Israel. And so we take it seriously, the call of the watchman to, to bless Israel uh, and to stand with Israel. And we want to be part of, of training others to understand the biblical roots of our faith um, and to understand the Lord's heart for his people and uh, how the, the story fits together. So that's also part of our heart. Again, we do it in very simple ways um, and we're learning as, as we go. So yeah, so that's Jesus House. I just wanted to uh, give you a bit of an intro to that. Uh, I'm doing very low-key stuff here, but <laughs> low-tech, low I mean, uh, this is our logo. How do I get it nearer? There we go. <laughs> um, it's part of the story here, and I have, have it in a carved version. Some people may have seen this in other parts of the world. It's very hard to get this the right way. So you go. So, and it is known as the hidden seed. Um, and the hidden seed is very significant to us as a ministry um, and we believe it has prophetic significance for the body of Christ. Uh, it's part of the the Hanhut history. It actually goes way back before Hanhut was established. Uh, so in 1628, so 100 years, 99 years before uh, the revival in Hanhut, uh, Johann Amos Comenius, who was the last uh, bishop uh, of the United Brethren in, in Moravia, which is the modern day Czech Republic. He was leading a small band of exiled believers over the border um, to Poland. So he was going from Czech Republic into Poland, or it was actually Moravia, but what we know as Czech Republic. And they were escaping perse persecution in their homeland, and they, they were a community of faith, and they were just looking for a place where they could you know, not be persecuted. Um, and in the midst of all that persecution and that movement, it looked like their, their community of faith was, was dying out. 
Um, and as Kaminia stood at the border, he raised his eyes to heaven and he, he cried out an, an historic prayer, a prophetic prayer. And his prayer was that God would uh, preserve a remnant. He would preserve a hidden seed that would one day spring up again and grow into a great tree for the glory of God. And it seemed like after that, everything had just died. Um, but we know the story <laughs> that actually 50 years after Caminus's death, a, a small band of believers still looking for a place to just live out their faith, cross the border from uh, what is the Czech Republic into Germany and found the land of Count Zinzendorf and um, basically asked if they could uh, just live there, just live as a faith community there. Um, and then they cut down the first tree uh, declared Psalm 84 verse, uh, verse 3 um, and, and uh, established the, the city, <laughs> it's actually a very small village, but <laughs> of Hernhut. Um, and right from day one, the declaration was that Hernhut would be a place by God's altar. And they dedicated, uh, dedicate, dedicated to it to the Lord. And most of you probably know the history that um, in 1727, after much striving in conflict and then repentance, <laughs> the Holy Spirit met the community and they were baptized uh, in, in the love of the Lord, which became known as the Moravian Pentecost. And they knew that they could not keep unity on their own. They could not do this alone. And so they started 24 seven prayer um, that went on for over a hundred years. And they were basically just coming before the Lord and saying, we can't do this on our own. In order to love, we need to know your love Lord. So they were continually seeking to understand the love of the Lord, to understand the lamb of God and his worthiness. And um, as they sought him then as, as happens, they began to get his heart and hit their hearts started to beat for the nations and they began to send out missionaries all, all around the world. Um, and Hanhut has been known as uh, the, the beginning of the modern mission movement and has impacted the prayer and missions movement all around the world. And um, many of you are probably impacted by, by the story. So that's where I am and this, this hidden seed <laughs> We, we have a wonderful craftsman in our community who makes these and we, we sometimes sell them, but usually we give them as gifts to ministries. And for us, it's, it's, uh, for us we want to live in that same DNA uh, of the Moravians. Um, but we also want when people come to Jesus' house that they would encounter the truth of the Lord, the encounter the love of the Lord, they would be transformed in this place and they would take seeds, seeds of the DNA of the history here and take them into the nations and that they would be planted again for his glory. So this seed is a message of uh, kingdom seeds going forth. It's uh, a message of perseverance in prayer you know, Comenius prayed this prayer, but he did not see the fulfillment in his lifetime. And often we're praying prayers that we will never see the fulfillment of in our own lifetime, or, or we won't know if the fulfillments come, because we're praying for things where we don't always see it in the natural. But we pray because we trust and we believe. Um, and so this is a, a story of perseverance in prayer. It's, a, it's about multiplication. It's about faithfulness to what the Lord is putting on on your heart so my prayer over you even though you can't come here and pick up the DNA <laughs> we know that the spirit is with you and so it's my prayer that even even as I share today that you will be be reminded of the heart of the Lord that you will be picking up the the kingdom seeds from from the stories like the Moravians history and that you will be then replanting those seeds in the nations to see a mighty uh, tree springing up for the glory of God. So that's my prayer for you for you today. And um, I just wanted to share that just to 
yeah, impart a little bit of, of our hearts and impart a little bit of what we're about. Um, and then I want to talk about something completely different. <laughs> Um, but it is actually still part of our DNA here in the house. Um, just move my notes here so I don't lose what I'm talking about. Yeah, just something from, from my story 13 years ago. I was uh, in England, actually 14 years ago, um, and the Lord in the middle of my normal job. I was working in a university in England, um, working with students who had dyslexia, ADHD, dyspraxia, just um, providing learning support and um, assessments. And had my church, had my life, loved Jesus, had my, you know, friendships and everything was reasonably good. And in the middle of that, the Lord said to me, uh, it's time for something new. And as I sought his heart of what he meant by that, he gave me two scriptures. One was Genesis 26, about Isaac redigging the wells of his father Abraham. And the other was uh, Jeremiah 6.16, which says, uh, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. And I didn't understand these verses. I didn't know what the Lord was saying to me. Um, but those verses uh, formed the, the journey that led me to, to Hernhut. And especially this part about the ancient past has been something that while I've been here, the Lord has been revealing to me what, what those ancient paths are and how we can learn to walk in them, how we can learn to see them. I'm sure there's much more that I still need to learn, but I wanted to talk today a little bit about what those ancient paths are, um, and particularly to do with Sabbath and to do with rest. Um, and what's interesting is later on in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 18 verse 15, it says, um, my people have forgotten me. They burn incense to worthless idols, which made them stumble in their ways in the ancient paths. They made them walk in byways on roads not built up. Um, and I just find that really interesting that God intended us for, to walk on these ancient paths, on these highways of righteousness, on these highways of goodness and of truth. It was his intention that we walk on those paths. And yet we have uh, forsaken those paths. We've stumbled and we've chosen instead byways. And highways are, are clear. They're easy to move along <laughs> and they're clear. But byways cause us to be disorientated. They're hard to get through. You have to use a lot of energy. It's stressful. And we often don't know where you're going. And so we've, instead of choosing the highway of the Lord, we've often cho chosen a, a byway that's caused us to be disorientated from the true things of God. Um, in that sense, we've, we've lost our way and we've forsaken the paths of righteousness, like it says in, in, in Psalm 23. The Lord wants us to walk on paths of righteousness for his glory, for his name's sake. And instead, we've, we've chosen often worldly byways that maybe seemed good, um, or maybe they just were what the world is telling us. <laughs> and so we've chosen those ways, but those ways are stressful, they're hard to navigate, and they disorientate ourselves. So we find ourselves fighting and stressed in our day to day. Um, but it's the Lord's heart, and, I, and I've been learning that so much about what the ancient paths are, what are the highways of God that he intends for us to, to walk upon. Um, there's many different things that we could say uh, are the ancient paths. God's been teaching me a lot about um, the highway of blessing in the place of family. I would love to talk to you about that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but the one thing I do want to talk about today is Sabbath and rest. And I think this is a very important uh, pathway 
that the Lord intended us to walk upon in our, in our rhythms of life um, that we've often forsaken or we've mis misunderstood. And so the question is, what, what actually is Sabbath? Uh, and how do we actually reclaim it? Uh, Genesis 2, 3 says, and God blessed the seventh day, made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. What is this Sabbath? And I think a lot of us know that it's a gift, but it's a gift that we find hard to, to really receive. In order to, to talk a bit more about rest and about the pathways of the Lord, um, I want us to look a little bit at the story um, of the Exodus, the Israelites. Um, we know the story, <laughs> but just to, to summarize, when the, when the Lord brought the Israelites out of Egypt, all they had known for 400 years was the rhythm of uh, the Egyptian gods. All they had known was the, the structures of their way of doing things. All they had known was slavery. They had forgotten the ways of the Lord. They'd forgotten the, 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 the heart of the God of, of Abraham. Um, and their whole life was under this, this, this slavery mindset and under the ways of Pharaoh. Um, and as, the, as they entered then into the wilderness, as the Lord delivered them out of Egypt, um, he took them on a journey of rediscovering his heart and his identity. Because same with us, when we are saved, we don't just, it's not just a case of being moved out of one position into another position. We need to relearn <laughs> everything about who the Lord is and about how he intends us to live. Um, the Lord not only was leading them out of Egypt, uh, but through the, through the feasts that he then gave them, through the Sabbath that he gave them, through the commandments and through the tabernacle, he was leading them out of mindsets and out of a lifestyle um, and out of slavery <laughs> into a, mind, a mindset and lifestyle of sonship and of liberty. Um, and that took a lot of deconstructing all the things that they thought they knew and all the things they had learned about how to live. They were, they were going from slavery mindset into a sonship mindset. And uh, that took a while. <laughs> and for us takes a while. Uh, to, to reestablish, to have our minds renewed and our understanding renewed of who, of who God is and how we live in the fullness of the freedom that he's won for us. Um, nowadays, often in our desire to uh, reject anything religious or anything uh, that could be deemed as legalistic, we often throw out some of the beautiful things that the Lord actually gave us in, in his word, such as the feasts and, and, and uh, Shabbat and or Sabbath. Um, but the Lord wants us to reclaim those things in, in the way that uh, he intended, not as a religious rule that we have to follow, but as a gift from him that teaches us the, the rhythms of the, of the Lord instead of us walking in the rhythms of the, of the world. Um, and I've just seen over the last few years just such beauty in the word of God of how he led the Israelites into these new rhythms of his heart and taught them about his identity, his character, what he is after. I mean, can you imagine that being in slavery for 400 years, being under this, this um, cycle of, of just producing and producing and producing that all their worth was about was that they were producing something for Pharaoh but they can never produce enough. And it was just, a, they were just, there was the yoke of slavery upon them. Uh, and, and then the Lord leads them out and he has to say to them, I am not like the gods of Egypt. I am not a God of slavery. I am a God of freedom. I am a God who is gracious, kind and compassionate. 
I am a God who wants you to walk in the freedom of, of, of your identity in me. Uh, and so he, he starts to reconstruct uh, their, their mindsets. Because you see, slavery is not just a position, but it is a condition and it is a mentality that we have to come out of. Uh, the Israelites were no longer in Egypt as slaves, but they still had Egypt within them. <laughs> and uh, he needed to reorientate them to his art, to his heart and his ways. Um, and so it is with us. When we're saved, we are freed from slavery. Our position is changed, but our condition and our mentality needs renewing over time as we begin to see the heart of God, his heart of love, his heart of grace, and his goodness. We know it that uh, Romans 12 uh, says that we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Um, and even in, as we were praying earlier, I think it was Annette who was talking about a perspective shift. And that's what we need day by day. We need a perspective shift because the world is constantly trying to get us to look towards the world's ways and to agree with the world's heart. Um, but God wants us to constantly be coming back, coming back to his word, coming back, gazing upon his beauty, coming back, agreeing with the truth of who he is, coming back and, and loving and adoring him because he knows that when we do that, when we gaze upon who he is, then everything comes into right alignment and our hearts are transformed. Um, and so this is part of the ancient path that the Lord wants us to grab hold of, uh, to be a realigned to, to, to who he is day by day. Um, and that first starts with understanding our position through the gospel of grace. Gospel is good news. And often when we're saved, we, we have this revelation um, of, of what the gospel is about, what the good news is about, what salvation is about. And we, we're amazed by it. We, we see our sinfulness and we see uh, what the Lord has done for us. But I think often that over the years, then we, we, we start to take that message for granted. But I want to encourage us to, to preach the gospel to ourselves every day. <laughs> Remind ourselves of the cross of Christ. Remind ourselves of, of what he's done. Um, and that's what we were doing in the hour before. We were reminding ourselves about this lamb of glory who was slain for us. Um, it says in, in Ephesians 2.8, for it's by grace that you have been saved, true faith, and not by our own doing, but it is a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. This is the good news, that we didn't have to strive to, to come into right alignment with God, but he came uh, and died for us as a gift. His salvation is a gift that we simply receive. And then, you know, the many different, different verses, uh, 2, 2 Corinthians 5.18, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. For we were, we were in slavery. We were enemies of God, dead in our sin and living in darkness. But through the finished work of the cross, <laughs> through the finished work of the cross, <laughs> we are a new creation. Uh, Christ has taken our sin nature and made us alive in him, uh, in him, in our spirits. And this is about a, a legal position shift. <laughs> and it was all done at the cross. We were in one position as enemies of God. And then through, through what Christ did on the cross, our new legal position is as a new creation, reconciled to God. And in that place, we can receive true rest. This is what rest is. This is what peace is. It's done. It's finished. We are free. We are friends of God. And this is the first point that we need to know in order to live on the pathway of rest and the pathway of Shabbat. Because Shabbat isn't about 
just a day that we do. <laughs> it's, it's an attitude of heart. Um, and it's about agreeing with truth. And in that way, we live in this pathway, this highway of truth. Um, I love the way uh, Mike Bickle talks about how we can take hold of the word and agree with it. He, he, he has practiced for many years just this very simple way of reading the scripture and then saying, I agree with this, Lord. I praying it back in, in agreement. I agree with this truth. Even if I don't fully understand it, it's your word. And so I agree with it. And then secondly, he asks for revelation. Um, so it might be like, I agree with, with this truth that, Lord, you are beautiful. You are so beautiful and you are so holy and perfect in your holiness. And then, then he move on to say, uh, but Lord, I ask for more revelation. Help me to understand your beauty more. Help me to see your beauty more. Help, help me to get it from here into here um, and to really by, be transformed by this truth. And then finally, he moves, moves on to help me to keep the, the, the prophetic promise that, was, that is in this scripture. So to live in the truth that Jesus is beautiful and perfect in holiness. Um, and so I think that's part of what we do when we want to walk on the highway of rest is to practice taking hold of the word day by day and just being like, yes, this is your truth. Show me more about what that means, Lord, because I don't get it yet. <laughs> and help me to live in the truth of that revelation it's it's so simple sometimes we we complicate things or we also feel like we know the certain scriptures so well that we just skip over them but part of resting and part of shabbat is to slow down and to remind ourselves of who the lord is and what he's done to take the time to just be meditating truly on the scripture sometimes i think that uh, instead of meditating on the scripture we we medicate on the scripture so we just kind of almost like inject it in and then rush away <laughs> but the lord wants us not to treat the word like like that like some kind of shot that we just run up and run off but he wants to really meditate on the words to really gaze upon him through the word day by day um, and this is what part of what I think it means to, to really walk on this path of rest. We need to come uh, out of Egypt in our thoughts, in our actions, in our mentality, in our hearts. And we do that by meditating on the truth. Yeah, and one way to, to, to do that is to actually pra actively practice the rhythm of Shabbat. So actually have this rhythm where one day a week we are truly uh, separating ourselves from our work <laughs> um, and actually practicing a rhythm of Shabbat. In, uh, I don't know if people have read a book by Walter Brueggemann called Shabbat, uh, Sabbath as Resistance. This is a great book. <laughs> um, and in it, he talks about uh, the Ten Commandments and looks at where the, the command for Sabbath is within the Ten Commandments, which of course is what the Lord gave to the Israelites as they came out of Egypt. And I just want to read through, um, I just want to read through the Ten Commandments. I don't want to just rush over it, but I'm actually just going to read through the Ten Commandments. So if you want to join me, you can look it up, Exodus 20. <clears throat> So Exodus 20, beginning at verse one. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, 
but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in, for in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or the manservant or maidservant or his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What's interesting in that passage is the section about Sabbath is in the middle and it's very long. <laughs> it's not just some passing comment. It's actually, you know, a real emphasis on it. And what Walter Brueggemann points out is that it, this, in, in this section, then the Sabbath come, becomes like a bridge between two sections. And the first section is all about our right relatedness to the Lord how we should honor him, um, how we should put him first and go his way. And then it talks about the Sabbath. And then afterwards, it talks about how we should relate to our neighbor, which reminds me of uh, the uh, Jesus's words um, in Matthew about what is the greatest commandment? It is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, the first being the first and greatest commandment. <laughs> and so back in Exodus, between those two things is the commandment about the Sabbath. And I don't think that's by accident, but I think the Sabbath, as we, as we come into this rhythm of rest, come into the true meaning of what Sabbath should be, then it allows us to continually come into this place of realignment realignment firstly with who god is remembering that he is god and we are not <laughs> remembering that he is holy and he is good setting our gaze upon him setting our heart towards him and honoring him and obeying him this is all about what it means as it says in john 15 about abiding in christ Abiding in the Lord is to continually realign ourselves to his heart and to his word. And so I think Sabbath helps us to orientate ourselves in that direction first. And as we do that, then Sabbath helps us to love our neighbors well. It helps us to pass on that heart to other people. And it, keep, it keeps us rooted in God's love and then helps us to, to love others well. And so I think it's vitally important in order for us to live as God has tend, intended us to, in order for us to live out the first commandment and have it in first place, that we also honor uh, Shabbat. It's not just, it's not a legalistic thing that we should do, but it's a gift that helps us stay on the right track. Um, in our right relatedness with God and in our right, right relatedness in, with other people. Um, when, when we have new people coming to serve in our house, we always talk to them about having Shabbat, about keeping Shabbat, and we make a bit of a joke about it because we, we're, we're like saying, please keep Shabbat. You'll be a much nicer person if you do. <laughs> and it's really important in community that we keep Shabbat because because it keeps us in the right place with the Lord. It, it refreshes our hearts. 
It brings us joy. It reminds us of his peace and shalom. We receive it in that place when we, when we step back and allow God to be God and remind ourselves of who he is. And then that means we become much nicer people to live with. Um, and it doesn't just benefit us, but it benefits the family of God when we, when we move in a rhythm of Shabbat. Um, another great book that I have is by Mark Buchanan. It's called The Rest of God. And in that book, he says um, that Sabbath is not just a day that we enter, but it is also a way that we see and a way that we walk in. Um, he says it's not just a time on the calendar, but it is also a disposition or an attitude of, of heart. And that's a really key thing. We need to have a Sabbath heart, not just do the Sabbath. Um, in in uh, Isaiah 30, uh, verse 15 and 16, Isaiah 30, 15 and 16, it says, For thus said the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and trust shall be your strength. And then it says, But you were unwilling, and you said, No, we will flee upon horses, therefore you shall flee away. And we said, We will ride upon swift steeds, therefore your pursuers shall be swift. And what Mark Buchanan points out in his book is that often people's attitude to Sabbath is, is actually like fleeing away. It's like, we're so busy, I just need a rest. And it's this, this uh, attitude of, of uh, kind of exiting, of escaping, of fleeing away, of checking out, of emptiness, of being alone. And that's often what people think of when they think of Shab Shabbat or Sabbath. They think, okay, I just need to get to this day off so that I can just rest, so that I can just get away from all the busyness. But that was never God's heart for, for Sabbath. And it's never his heart for us, but his heart for Sabbath is about returning. It's not about escaping. <laughs> it's about returning to God's ways. It's about entering into uh, God's presence um, obviously, we, we should be entering into God's presence every day, but this is a special day of taking extra time to, to just dwell in the presence of the Lord, to, to um, gaze upon his word. It's, it's a day of filling. It's not a day of emptying. <laughs> um, it's a day of being with God and family. And I know that many people who have families perhaps think, oh, my goodness, how can I do Shabbat it's, it's just not possible in my life or my lifestyle that I would say bring before the Lord and maybe also your mindset about what Shabbat is it needs some realigning because because uh, uh, Shabbat is not about getting away from family <laughs> but it's about delighting delighting in the family and and uh, allowing God to to come into the center of that place and just to find new, new, fresh ways to enjoy God and to, to enjoy one another, separating from the busyness and the, and the activity of the week um, and to, to really, yeah, just embrace the Lord. Um, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Doesn't say run away from work, all of you who are weary and burdened. <laughs> says come to me and that is the heart of of sabbath is is coming uh coming back to the lord and reminding ourselves of who he is um i just want to uh, give a few phrases that help us to understanding it understanding it a bit more so sabbath is as walter brueggemann says sabbath is resisting Sabbath is resistance. Sabbath is resistance to the world's ways and the mindset of Egypt. Actually, when we celebrate and move in a rhythm of Shabbat, it's actually warfare because we are acting in a way that stands against the enemy's schemes. 
And we're saying, no, we will not live in this rhythm of work, 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 produce, produce, produce. It's never enough. I've got to earn my way. I've got to prove myself. I've got to do better, have bigger things, be greater. Um, that's the world's way. But the Lord's way is, is, is the opposite of that. It's, it's reminding ourselves that he is Lord. He is big. He is great. <laughs> he is worthy. And we um, come to him in that posture of, of, of a heart that is poor in spirit and remind ourselves we need you. So as we celebrate Shabbat, we're standing against the world's mindset and we're living in the, the pathways of God. Um, Sabbath or Shabbat is, is renewing. It is re reconciling. It is uh, redeeming. It reminds us of this position of peace that we have with the Lord and trains us to walk in that shalom. It's coming back to that place of saying, yes, God is my peace. God is my shalom. And in that place, just allowing him to restore us and and. Um, get us ready for another week of work focused on him filled by his spirit and restored in the deep places sabbath is a place of healing in that sense uh, sabbath as i said before is not escaping it is returning it's returning to the lord and his pathways uh, sabbath is highly relational it's not about being alone and escaping everybody, although there might be some aspects of that in it, in terms of being alone, but it's highly relational. Sabbath, uh, the, the Shabbat celebration that the Jews have is a, is a family orientated celebration. It's coming together and reminding themselves of, the, of God's faithfulness, that he is the faithful one who has kept them in the week before, and he is the faithful one who will keep them in the week ahead. It's, it's reminding ourselves of, of, of a position of trust before the Lord, that he is trustworthy and he is faithful. In that sense, it realigns us to the truth. Um, and yeah, Sabbath, Sabbath is rest. It's rest for our body, mind, soul, and spirit. And you can only have true rest when you truly trust. Because if you don't trust, you can't let go. But Sabbath is about letting go of all the parts where we say, I need to do it. I need to do it in my strength. I need to do it in my way. And it's letting go of all that and saying, I don't have to keep working in order to to be sustained because God is my sustainer, God is my provider and God is my shalom. So learning to walk on the ancient path of rest and Shabbat is, is learning to walk on a way that in, in many ways we're not accustomed to. It takes time to learn to realign. Um, and it also most importantly um, keeps us in that place of if we do it, of, of remembering that, that we're not just here on earth, but there is an eternal perspective that we need to shift ourselves to constantly. We can get week by week, we can get so involved in our work, in the day to day, in the things that need doing or the problems around us. And what uh, Sabbath does for us is gives us that opportunity to, to look again at an eternal perspective. And to cry out, like we were saying before, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, to remind ourselves that we're, we're heading towards this place of Jesus's return. And we want to be that ready bride. And so we need constantly to be reminded of who he is and who he wants us to be as his people. And to keep living in this place of, of of having our minds set on heavenly things, of having our minds set and focused on, on the greater story um, that Jesus is coming for a ready bride and that uh, we want to be the ones who have hearts aligned with him. So I wanna encourage you this day, that is, this is my message, <laughs> to come before the Lord and ask him what he wants to reveal to you about Sabbath 
about living in rhythms of rest, of living in a place of right relatedness, gazing upon his beauty, and about living with an eternal perspective, of continually coming back to those, those points, those reminders of our position in him and, and the greatest story uh, of, of salvation history um, and that Jesus is returning for us as a prepared glorious bride. We are not going to be a, an overworked, uh, sluggish, bored bride. We're going to be glorious, beautiful, <laughs> joyful bride. And uh, one way we can prepare ourselves is learning to live in the rhythms um, and, the, and the true perspective um, of the Lord. So that is what I wanted to share with you that this day, um, and I would just encourage you to meditate upon that. Amen. <laughs> wow. That was amazing, Sue. Well done. <laughs> what a great word. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, while you're with us, Sue, could you take a few more minutes here, just uh, maybe five minutes, and give us uh, a vision for uh, what you guys are working on in 2022? Um, invitation to come to hair <laughs> Yes, it would be my pleasure. Uh, yes, yeah, so next year, 2022, is the 300 year anniversary of the founding of Hernhut. Um, and the whole town will be celebrating in different ways. And when we, as the House of Prayer, ask the Lord, how, how can we honor you? How can we celebrate that anniversary? We felt that the best way for us to, to do that would be to do 24-7 worship and prayer for a season of time, um, which for us as a very small community is a big challenge. And first of all, we thought we would do it for the year. Um, but then as we, as we sought the Lord more, um, we felt that the Lord wanted us to do it from, uh, from Pesach, so from Passover, uh, right through to uh, the end of, of the Feast of Tabernacles. So that will be 18th of April through to the 15th of October 2022. We will be uh, doing 24-7 worship and prayer in Hernhut. And we want to invite the nations. We cannot do it alone. And for us, that the, the, even the vision is not to do it alone. We really want the beauty of the nations. We want the nations to come and lift their song of praise, um, bring their offering before the Lord in Hanhut in 2022. Um, and we're really excited about it, um, but it is a massive undertaking for us in many different ways. Uh, so we welcome you to come. You can come for a, a short season of time, just for a few days, or you can come if you wanted to for a num number of weeks or months, if the Lord puts that on your heart. Um, you can bring teams. We would love it if we had uh, teams who would come for like a week and just invest uh, together in, in leading prayer and worship. And um, we also need advice if people have done these sorts of things and can advise us on what we need to think about. Uh, we need prayer for sure in preparation and we need funding. So, uh, yeah, you can find a, a promotional video about it on, on YouTube. Um, it's called Fire on the Altar 2022. Um, and so if you type that in, or if you type Jesus House Hanhut, then into YouTube, we also have, um, have our own Jesus House YouTube. So you can find it there in German and in English. Um, it's about five minutes long, just explaining the vision. We would love you to share it in your uh, communities and to uh, think about coming and joining us uh, to just honor the Lord at the, on this anniversary. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Sue. Uh, any final thoughts, Jonathan, before we close our teaching time? Hey, Jason. Sue, that was awesome. Thanks so much for that word on rest. Um, yeah, just wanted to make a few announcements here. Um, first of all, uh, we just want to recognize we've prayed for 
a whole half a year, which is pretty amazing. And we want to celebrate that. Um, we are going to have an official celebration moment um, next Friday during church. And so we'll be focusing on just celebrating God's faithfulness, sharing testimonies, praying together. And so just wanted to draw that to your attention. If there's ways you've seen God answer prayer or show up uh, through prayer, we want, we want you to bring those testimonies with you next week. Um, and so we're really excited about that. Um, Melody, I know there are other things. What am I, what am I missing? I know we had a couple more announcements. Um, Both of us are forgetting what they were. <laughs> oh, 10 days, 10 days in the fall. Do you want to share something about that? Oh yeah. Yeah. 10 days is coming up. And so, um, yeah, love to have people. We're, um, just really in the process of meeting new folks, connecting with new, um, people who might be interested in doing a 10 day prayer event in their city, um, being part of this transformative season. Um, I believe God is really calling the body into uh, global festivals right now, global seasons of convergence. Um, and um, Jason just sent out a great report about what happened in this uh, Passover to Pentecost season, uh, the incredible harvest that has come in, all this, all the partnership and collaboration of different ministries in the body. And I'm just increasingly sensing we're going to see similar partnership like that in the fall. Uh, I'm sorry, in the autumn. Oh, I'm sorry, Southern Hemisphere in September and October. Um, <laughs> um, but we just believe these, um, these uh, latter festivals, these um, uh, uh, the, the second series of feasts are going to be increasingly important in the body. I think we saw that begin to happen last year uh, with some amazing collaboration with the return. Um, other great ministries like Awaken the Dawn that are focusing on tabernacles. And so, yeah, we'd love to, we just sense God is stirring something. Uh, I'm really excited about some of the things that are being planned for this fall. And we'd love to connect with you regarding um, starting a 10 days prayer event in your city um, and in your region. So uh, in terms of upcoming events, we are going to have a call next week, noon, um, uh, noon Eastern related to that, if you're interested. And there's a lot of other um, things kind of stirring there. So just reach out to uh, reach out to us or check out the website. Um, and um, yeah, that's about it. Melody, I don't feel like I did that great on that announcement, but I'm glad we did it anyway. And maybe I had a little exuberance where, I, where my uh, where my words were were lagging behind. But um, yeah, Jason, back to you, man. Awesome. Well, let me just uh, close in prayer. Let's pray for Sue. Um, hey, let us know too if you if you sensing the Lord leading you to Heron Hill. We'd love to talk. See how this global family digital prayer room can dovetail with. 2022 and the vision in Heron Hoot. Uh, I mean, we, in a sense, are doing 24-7 prayer on a digital platform. So it's kind of Moravian. <laughs> Pretty fun. So, Father, we just thank you so much for Sue. We bless her today. Thank you for the Jesus House and their team, for their family. Thank you that they're living in these rhythms of rest, of grace, Lord. And I pray this message, Lord, would run far and wide, that we would return to you. You are the Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus. Father, we uh, pray for favor for the Jesus house. God, I ask for an abundance of finances right now uh, to come rushing in. Uh, Lord, would you be their resource and their provision? And all that they need, God, to carry out the assignment that you've given them. And I pray that as, as you do this, God, prepare them, their team, and their family for 2022. God, that this would be a well of awakening, God. Uh, you would just uh, bring forth and roar forth your purposes in these last days. 
In the name of Jesus, we honor, Lord, the blood of the Moravians, their sacrifice. We honor, Lord, um, our fathers and mothers that have gone before us. Pray for this hidden seed to be planted in every nation in the earth. Let it spring forth, we pray. The Lamb of glory will receive the due reward for his sufferings. Jesus, we love you. Praise you. Commit soon in our teeth. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.